or, or just go. Are you ready? No, I'm ready. Okay. So, I assume you all know what you're here for, but in case you didn't, uh, I'm giving a workshop on how to finish and detail your props. Shit, this is chemistry. No, it's not chemistry. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, this is a very big thing because an unfinished prop or a badly finished prop is looks bad. And it's very noticeable and is almost unusable for photos because it tends to detract from your outfit if it doesn't match or look good. So. First off, I'm going to assume that you have an unfinished prop. So the base is built, you have it, but it's not quite there yet. Everything's made out of different materials. It doesn't look flow, it doesn't have paint on it. You might need to add some details on it that you couldn't quite do out of your base materials. So, what do you plan to do? Basically, what you have to do is start doing your finishing work. And that's where you have to add details to the prop to make it look more like one material or cohesive and look realistic, basically. Like, say, for instance, you have a gun. If you have it made out of wood, it doesn't look like a gun yet. So, there's multiple, like, finishing things that you can do uh, to your props. Uh, the most efficient ones are Bondo and fiberglass resin. Uh, basically... Swear by Bondo. <laughs> swear by Bondo, basically. Uh, even if it's hard to work with, but that comes later. Uh, you can also use wood filler if you're using uh, like really like cheap materials and just need it to get a nice little like layer over top of it to make it all look smooth and look all the same. Uh, you can use gesso, but if you're going to be doing it, you might as well use wood filler because it's going to end up doing the exact same. And gesso acts is is basically like a glue, and you need multiple layers of it before it starts to look good. Isn't it just, just really kind of a primer? Yeah, it's it's really just a primer, so it's it's not the best choice to use. And if you're going to prime it anyway, you might as well just be using an actual paint primer. Uh, plastic dip is good for armor, because um, you can't put Bondo or fiberglass resin on armor. Although you could do resin on armor, but that's a whole other story. Um, but plastic dip is good for foam armor, because uh, none of this other stuff would work, because that's the only thing that's actually flexible. First, we have our Bondo. Bondo is a two-part mix. You have the putty and the hardware. Uh, couldn't bring it in today because it's carcinogenic, it smells really bad, and I'm pretty sure the building staff would hate me if I did so, so you're going to have to deal with the pictures that I got. Uh, basically, you pour however much you plan to work with into like a container, plastic container. Uh, I personally just use cardboard or like paper plates because once it hardens on it afterwards, you just throw it out and it's not a big deal. Um, so after you place the amount in there, you add your hardener, which is in this little like tube. It's this red liquid, as you see in there. Um, basically, you add an, uh, an inch line for slow hardening of the Bondo, or three inches for really, really fast, really hard. Uh, so if, say you're only making like a small bit, you probably put like three inches on it just because you can apply it really quickly and then it'll dry really quickly. Uh, two inches for you know a good medium. Uh, that being said. Once you start applying it, so for, you're gonna have you're gonna have to fold the hardener into the bondo. So you basically just take your spatula, mix it in to the bondo until it achieves this nice like pinkish color. Depending on how much hardener you put in, because the hardener is red and the bondo is white, um, it'll change different shades of red. But basically, once it looks a uniform color, that's your time that you have to work with it because the hardener is already working. So. If you start with like one inch of hardener, you have about 15, maybe 20 minutes of work time. If you put three inches, you got five minutes to work with it. So you act, you got to act quickly, and you, there's no time to basically waste once you start mixing that hardener in. So you're going to apply to the prop with a bendable putty knife. You don't want something that's not bendable. Like you don't want to use an actual knife because it's not going to apply very well, especially over curves. Uh, or anything that's not a straight surface, like flat surface. Um, and you want to apply it in like as smooth as possible. You don't, want to, you don't want it to be too thin, but you also don't want it to be too thick, because then it's going to be uneven. So you just want it to make it real smooth. Um, and then, like I said, yeah, depending on how much harder you apply it, how much time you have to work with it. So once you mess around with it, you get used to how much time you have to work with for how much harder you're using. Um, and know that, once you know that, it makes it a lot easier, but be aware before you start working. When working with Bondo, wear gloves. Yes. It will screw up your skin. Yes, it will, unless you happen to just 
be right by a sink and you get under gloves and you're automatically in the sink. But wear gloves, plus it's just a messy thing in a general sense because it's messy and you'll see that in the next few pictures. So this is what you want to apply it like. You get that putty knife and you just apply it in a very thin, smooth manner to whatever prop you're doing. Don't do this. This is bad. Really bad. Um, as you can see, it's applied, you know, all over it, and that's nice, but you'll see that it has a lots of like, folds on it, it's not smooth, you can't really see any of the contours in it, and there's a lot of, like, edges sticking out of it. While this does work, sooner or later, you're going to have to sand all that off. It's a pain to sand anything that's not smooth, because Bondo hardens to be really, really hard, and sanding something like that is... It's going to take a lot of time, and you're going to waste a lot of sandpaper. Plus, when you do it like that, you'll see a lot of holes in here, and you're just going to have to spot fill them later anyway. So you're basically just making more time for you, and you're wasting a lot of Bondo in the process. So after it starts, after it dries for that layer, so after you've done, it starts to like that hardening process where you can no longer work with it. You get like a 30 minute leeway time where it fully hardens into a like solid sheet. Um, and then it, you'll know when it's done because it'll, it'll be cold because once you start mixing the hardener in, uh, it gets really hot. This is chemistry. Uh, so you'll know it's done when it's done because it'll stop being warm. It'll be cold to touch. At that point, you're going to basically do your sanding time, which if you know, if you built any good like sizable props, you'll know that 60% of the time, up to like 75% of the time, is sanding. It's a laborious process, but you have to do it. So you're going to start with 80 grit sandpaper, take off the majority of it, and then you're going to work your way up to like, uh, usually like 22, uh, 220 grit, uh, until everything starts to get smooth and gets away the way you like it. At this point, you're going to have to, you're going to realize that there's like, probably some holes in your Bondo process just when you're not applying it correctly or just you need to put more bondo in a certain place because it's thinner in other places. So you're going to have to do this process multiple times. Um, I don't recommend doing the process, waiting for it to cool, and then bonding again before you sand it because then you're going to end up having that problem because if there's any bit of not smoothness and you start to put bondo over top of it, you're going to get those weird fold lines because of the fact that there's more on it than there should be and it's not flat. So, just do the steps. It may take longer, but if you don't do the steps, it will take you even longer. Um, after that, uh, you might notice that there's very, very, very little tiny, like, pinpoint holes, like as if somebody, like, jabbed a little tiny pin into your, like, Bondo. Uh, at this point, and I forgot to put a picture on the slide, you're going to use what's not, uh, they sell with Bondo is uh, Bondo Spot Putty. It comes in a separate tube. And it's, it looks very similar to what the hardener is, but it's its own separate putty. It's just an out-of-the-tube out putty. It's one part, uh, and you spread it just like you would with a Bondo. Um, it dries within 20 to 30 minutes for the hardiest of normal Bondo, but you can't use it on its own because it only hardens onto other Bondo. So if you don't do it on Bondo, it just flakes off and breaks. And it's not Because it, it basically attaches itself to the Bondo is how it works. So when you don't have it on something that's already there, it just falls off. Um, if you're still worried about imperfections, you can also use, um, buy filler primer. Uh, you basically go to a hardware store and they have uh, filler primer. Usually, there's usually two colors of it. There's like this white primer and then there's also like the red primer. The red primer is a lot better for seeing imperfections, but if you are already, if you only see minor, minor imperfections, like really, really tiny, go for the white because you're only going to make a few changes. And then you already have your primer on. So this is a picture of what of a helmet that has just had its first pass of Bondo on it. Uh, this is a resin cast, so the base of it is resin, but you need the finishing layers of Bondo to make you get the shape that you really want. Because a lot of times when you do a resin cast, it's not going to be exactly the shape you want it usually unless you happen to be really lucky with uh, your resin casting but anyway you have your bondo to create the finishing fin these finishing edges so after the sanding then you add your primer so that's what the finished helmet looks like finished after the filler primer so you can see that from this picture you have all these rough edges 
you have all these divots and some of these lines are not quite as well as they should have. So you can see later on the other picture that if it's sanded down, it creates a much nicer line and that's basically what vinyl is for. So it builds it up by layer to get what kind of effect that you want. So the second thing is using fiberglass resin. Now fiberglass resin is a lot harder to work with because it's a liquid instead of a putty. Um, it's similar to Bondo though because it's one part resin so you have your like resin base it's just a liquid gel almost and then you have your hardener like dropper thing so you, you measure out how much resin you want and then you add depending on like the Bondo however much hardener you want to add you add a few drops for it uh, I usually see like three to five is what the common ones are um, and then you apply it like a pour on and if you've ever done anything like with like a pour on mold or for like resin casting or anything like that. You just take your bucket, you take your prop, you suspend it over like a sheet, because you don't want to do this on the floor, obviously. And you just pour the resin on. And it's gonna slowly cover it and make sure you get everything. Um, and then it will, after a while it will dry and be what you need. Now, like I said, there's a lot of problems with this. A lot of people really only use this for like the inside of helmets to create like a smooth protective layer and just build up material on it. It's very hard to apply it to the outside of a prop and have it look smooth because it'll it will take a lot of work to like get it down to what you need. Um, that's why Bondo is much is a much better choice because you don't have to pour it on because if you've ever tried to pour like any kind of liquid on something and, and try to have it stick, you'll notice that the liquid doesn't exactly form to the object. So this is really good if you want super durable strength because Bondo is, it's only a cover, it's not really, it's not really meant for structural integrity, whereas fiberglass resin is, so that's why they recommend putting it on the inside of helmets, so that you have some sort of structural part to the helmet that is beyond just the Bondo. The Bondo is more just for looks, whereas the fiberglass resin is more just for the base. Um, but yeah, once again, gloves, it's carcinogenic, and it gets everywhere. It's really messy. So when you're working with it, I suggest test pieces for all of this because just so you can get to know how to, how to work it. And then once you know, have a good idea on how it works, then you can start on your own prop. Because once you start with using Bondo and using fiberglass, you can't take back what you've got. So you've got to work with what you've made, or you got trash it. And nobody wants to trash something that they've already built. So the second thing is, is this is a very basic thing. It's a wood filler. Um, you can buy it just, it's at any pretty much hardware store. Um, they usually use it just to like, if you have like pockets in wood, you put wood filler on it and it fills it and it gets the like hardiness of wood and the look of wood, usually. Um, it's very basic. It's not very good for strength, but if you want it to be semi-hard, like say for instance you made a prop out of uh, foam core and you didn't really want to spend the money to do like a Bondo covering over the entire thing, wood filler is really cheap. It's really quick to apply because it's, it's just a putty thing that you apply and it'll dry sooner or later. And then it's, then it's paintable and sandable. Um, it's not super strong, it's not super durable, but it does work. So if you're tight on money, and it, it works. The last one, since I, like I said with Gesso, Gesso is not really much of a, an actual like cover to it. It's more just a primer bit, just to give your surface kind of an edge to it beyond what your edge might already have. Plastic dip is basically just spray rubber, as I've, we've all seen in previous uh, workshops with Jace's armor workshop. I've mentioned it in mine. Um, it's meant to be used on bendable props because it's rubber. Um, it's not, it's very structurally intact. I tried, I was going to bring in a piece that I had or was going to make with Plasti Dip uh, last night, but I did not have the time to get it done with because I was making this PowerPoint and I procrastinated on homework and yeah. So, basically, um, there's not a whole lot I can say with it um, other than follow the directions on the can. Um, Basically how you do it is, it's like spray paint. Um, you just take the can, you have your prop, and you spray at, I believe it's like a 45 degree angle, at like three inches from your prop. You don't want it too far, because it's, going to, it's not gonna spray over your entire prop. 
in the correct thickness that you need, and you don't want it too close because otherwise it's going to clump up. Um, and then after you spray it, you wait for it to harden, you spray it again. Uh, you need to do, usually most people do like three or four layers just to give it a good thickness to it to, for strength. Um, and then it's fully bendable, and at this point, uh, as long as your original prop that you were putting it on was smooth, your final layer will also be smooth, and you can just paint. Uh, plastic dip does not sand, so if your prop isn't smooth, you need to make it smooth before you put on plastic dip. So, next is your like finishing details. So, say for instance you have, I don't know, say a sword hilt. But you have, so you build your sword hilt out of, you know, whatever material you've got. And then you have like little fine details like raised, raised edges or even depressed edges maybe. Uh, and you need to figure out how to make those. Um, you can't make that with Bondo because Bondo, it's, it's a spreadable putty. It's, it doesn't build up on its own. Fiberglass resin is really inefficient for that kind of a thing unless you have a mold. So you can't use that. So what do you use? Poxy Sculpt. Poxy Sculpt is the best shit ever. Not lying. It is a it is a two part polymer clay. So you have part A and you have part B. You take equal parts of both and you knead them together until they're a nice uniform color. And then you basically sculpt whatever you need to make. And epoxy sculpt is really sticky. So whatever you put it on, it will stick to, and it will not come off. Like, but that also goes to say you can't freeform sculpt with epoxy sculpt because anything you put it on, it will stick. So, you have, you have to make sure that you're actually putting it on something instead of just building it and putting it down somewhere because wherever you put it down, it's going to pretty much dry to. Um, and then after 24 hours of you working with it, um, it will dry into being this really, really hard plastic that is uh, sandable, paintable, and just raised edges, whatever you need. Okay. So, at this point, now that you've done all of those little finishing details, you have your finished prop, but it's unpainted. So, now you need to finish it, and this is the most crucial detail because a well-painted prop can make or break. I've seen really, really, really well-made, like, resin-casted props that have had awful paint jobs, and they just look terrible. But I've also seen somebody take a toy gun from Walmart and give it a repaint, and it looks like a real gun. So... Painting makes or breaks a prop. So you can take a really bad prop and give it a great paint job and make it a great prop. So if there's anything to take from this, learn how to paint. Um, so first, you're going to start with your primer. Uh, unless you have a primer base coat combo, because like for instance, uh, at the bookstore they sell plutonium paint. Plutonium paint acts as a primer in itself, so you don't have to add another primer coat, so less buying of paint for you, uh, which is always nice. Uh, so first you get your primer base, and then you add your base coat of paint. Um, painting is pretty much on your own. Follow the directions on the can for how many coats they suggest, uh, or how many you feel is necessary. Um, if your primer says do like two to three coats, do two to three coats, because usually what they say they mean, because otherwise, otherwise your, prop, your prop is going to dry, and the paint's going to chip off, and it's not going to look good. So. Now you have to move on to the paint detail. Paint detailing is really where it's all at, because the base coat's nice, but the details are where things really start to pop. So after you start, after you have your primer and you're doing your base, you have to take into material, like take into account what material your prop is. So say for instance you have a gun. Your base like paint coat should be like a metal color, like you know, that silver metal. Because if you ever want to like do any um, like scratches or dents on it, uh, or any like finishing scuff marks, you need to have that as your base layer. Otherwise, your paint won't work. Um, I'll explain it later for when I'm doing some of the demonstrations and pictures. Uh, so you have your base, your base coat, and then over top of that, you're going to add your probably your second base coat for whatever color it actually is. So. I suggest using spray paints, I said it before. Um, unless you have an airbrush, airbrush is great, especially if you're doing detailing because um, you can get really fine details with airbrushing and it's actually really cheap to use airbrushes. Like the, the airbrushes themselves aren't cheap, but the paint for airbrushes is rather cheap. Um, and then apply thinly. You don't want to add too much spray paint all at once, otherwise it won't dry. And when it does dry, a lot of times it's 
moves around a bit. You get weird like folds on it. It just doesn't look good. So in a detailing painting, um, if you have like letters or emblems that are on your paint on your uh, prop, uh, you would use enamel paint, which is you. these little like craft paint things. You can buy them at the bookstore. They have them at hardware stores. Um, you could also use lacquer paints, which look very similar to these, but they're labeled. Um, you can use acrylic, but they're a little hard to deal with. They flake. If anybody's worked with acrylic, they kind of flake off afterwards, and they're really just kind of iffy to use. They're really nice to paint, but sometimes they're iffy. Um, usually with acrylics, what you want to do is have um, some kind of clear finishing coat of another material. Um, but like, yeah, yeah, Mod Podge, Podge, varnish, um, varnish, clear base coat over top of it just to kind of protect yeah. it. And clear So there's that, but I just like enamel. Personally, I think it dries faster. I've had enamel paint dry in like four hours on me. But that also goes to say, take, uh, do test paints with all of your paint, because I've actually done a test paint with four of the exact same spray paint in the same line but different colors. And all four of them had different dry times. So one of them had like a two hour dry time, it was just a basic black. And then I had a gold that took four days to dry. Four entire days. So, and you can't paint again, like a ne your next coat, until that previous coat has fully dried. So you need to be aware, because you don't want to go into like, say for instance, Cosplay Hell Week right before con. Spray paint and then, you know, realize at the beginning of the week and then realize, oh crap, my paint's not drying, it's coming up to the deadline, there's not much I can do about it because it's still drying. So, make sure you know beforehand. Um, weathering techniques. So, this is where you have, if you have, you know, a prop that isn't weathered, um, it's not a problem. Um, some props just aren't weathered 